My name is Eric Kimondo and help me to specially welcome Mr. Felix Nzuki, a professional business coach from Otipro Limited and he's here together with us to talk to us about marketing management. Karibu sana, sir. Thank you, Eric. Mm -hmm. It's always a pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. Uh, to interact with our audience. Mm -hmm. I know these are entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. these are business leaders. Mm -hmm. So these issues about how uh, we can have health, mm -hmm. healthy businesses, mm -hmm. performing businesses, mm -hmm. I think it is in everybody's interest mm -hmm. to see that the success of every venture they're starting, mm -hmm. uh, they see the light of the day. Mm -hmm. So this conversation is just to sharpen one another, mm -hmm. <clears throat> to make us... Uh, seek that one percent improvement you know mm -hmm. the other day we agreed mm -hmm. if at least you can uh improve one percent of whatever you're doing per day mm -hmm. you're making a lot of progress wow so um these conversations uh excite me mm -hmm. because i know we are building someone mm -hmm. and this information mm -hmm. will uh, provoke someone to change mm -hmm. even if it's that one thing mm -hmm. how they're doing marketing mm -hmm. how they're running the business mm -hmm. as we move closer to success mm -hmm. all we want to see is succeeding businesses mm -hmm. for the sake of our economy mm -hmm. our families our, yeah. uh, the nation mm -hmm. yeah this is what we are called to wow. do wow and you've been taking us on a very wonderful series here yeah, starting from the transition from um uh, tertiary education to the workplace mm. also talk to us about communication define for us marketing management <clears throat> uh let's start by Again, revisiting how we look at a business. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a successful business, uh, the other day we were looking at uh, a number of businesses. Mm -hmm. If you take 10 businesses, which seemingly are doing very well, and then you compare what are the trends, what are the common things uh, appearing to across all of them, you'll find uh, at least three things mm -hmm. are standard across them. The governance is good, mm -hmm. uh, marketing, and financial reportings. So uh, when you look at uh, businesses which are struggling, take any 10 businesses and look at uh, their governance, look at uh, their marketing efforts, and look at their financial reporting uh, principles and practices you begin to draw some uh, some commonalities. You begin to observe certain trends are common to all of them. Mm -hmm. So indeed, we are saying every successful business, mm -hmm. there are some fundamental principles which if observed, mm -hmm. if when you obey as a business, success is more guaranteed. Success is closely assured mm -hmm. because you are obeying these fundamental principles of business. So one of that now is what you're looking at today. We are calling it marketing management. Mm -hmm. This is our all new subject, uh, which is the like I can call the lifeblood of the business. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to define <clears throat> marketing management in, in this manner. Every business exists to do certain three functions and looks at uh, two great outcomes. Mm -hmm. Now, every business will want to create value. Mm -hmm. Then they need to communicate value. Mm -hmm. Then they, they have to deliver this value to a target market. Okay. That is an outcome. Mm -hmm. And then at a profit. So I call it the CCDV mm -hmm. TP mantra. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Create, uh -huh. communicate, mm -hmm. deliver value. Mm -hmm. Three functions. Mm -hmm. At a target, to a target market, mm -hmm. at a profit. Mm -hmm. So now when we are measuring the health and the performance of a business, we are looking at our eyes are fixed mm -hmm. on these three functions. Mm -hmm. Are you creating value? Are you communicating this value? And are you delivering to the expected customer? So um, when we talk about creating value, this is a subject we call product management. 
<clears throat> you know, this has evolved quite a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago, pro product development, if you have an organization, if you have a business, it would have been uh, more an inside uh, research by your team. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a business secret. Now, today, product management is no longer a business secret. Mm -hmm. You look out there, what are people, what are the other businesses doing similar to what I'm doing? Uh, how are they better than me? What improvements can I do to my product and service to meet the expectation of the consumer much better than my competitors? So product uh, management is now evolving. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of benchmarking. There's a lot of comparison. Uh, we're looking across our industry what uh, uh, others are doing and then we build a product based on that so now you find that now product development is a place we want to make sure the marketer mm -hmm. is seated on that table mm -hmm. <laughs> because <clears throat> when we are creating a product mm -hmm. <laughs> we have seen a need in the market mm -hmm. we have seen a gap and we want to go and fill that gap. Mm -hmm. we, we have seen a problem and we want to go and solve that problem. But now that problem, we want to solve it more effectively and efficiently than our competitors. Mm -hmm. So what are we saying? We want to create a differentiation. We want to be differentiated from the, <clears throat> the next available solution. So now that differentiation is our secret. If the marketer is not aware about that one thing mm -hmm. which makes our product different than the competitor, when they're going to sell, they'll sell the ordinary. <laughs> yeah. So when you look at our product development journey, mm -hmm. we are trying to be extraordinary. Mm -hmm. We are trying to introduce one aspect into our product, mm -hmm. one aspect into our business, mm -hmm. and that is the conversation we don't want our market marketers to miss. Mm -hmm. You know, previously, uh, product development was uh, mm -hmm. left to the research and development team. Mm -hmm. Then they build the product and they throw it to the marketers <laughs> to go get rid of it. We have a full <laughs> warehouse of product, move the product by tomorrow. So, you know, the consumer of today mm -hmm. is very, uh, it's very sensitive. Ready. They are buying at an emotional level. Uh -huh. If it's not speaking to their heart, um, when, when I'm buying something as a consumer, mm -hmm. I will ask myself, how do I feel about it? If I'm going to buy a shirt, mm -hmm. I need to, to, to dress, not, not how it looks. Mm -hmm. How do I feel when I'm in that shirt? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, at more, it's more at an emotional level. Mm -hmm. The consumer, now you need to appeal to their, mm -hmm. to their emotions. Mm -hmm. So if now the marketer is left out of that equation, equation when we are sitting down to design mm -hmm. our product when we are sitting down to design our service and bring that one differentiator mm -hmm. we need our marketers to be in that conversation mm -hmm. so that's that's why we are redefining mm -hmm. market management mm -hmm. from number one product development mm -hmm. so when we are creating products, when we are creating, when we are innovating, the marketer must be in that room. Mm -hmm. So this is now the evolution of wow. marketing. This is evolution of businesses. Mm -hmm. Businesses who are winning in the marketplace, this is the approach they are taking. Mm -hmm. They bring everyone in the room. We wow. hear and we understand why is our product different? Mm -hmm. What are those things? Mm -hmm. You know, I had an experience in one of my previous places of work mm -hmm. we we had this uh, awesome product mm -hmm. uh, from the technological perspective mm -hmm. uh, we had released a very exciting product but now when i look to the marketing team 
what they are communicating. They have no idea the excitement we have introduced into the product. <laughs> and this is not now what they are positioning in the market. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what are we saying? We don't want well, to repeat that mistake mm -hmm. of leaving the mm -hmm. product, mm -hmm. uh, the marketer, out of product development. Mm -hmm. So we said that there well, are three things. Mm -hmm. You create, mm -hmm. you communicate, mm -hmm. and you deliver. Mm -hmm. Now let me go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Communicate value. Now this is what we call brand management. Mm -hmm. uh, if I ask you what is your understanding of brand management, it used to be packaging. Mm -hmm. What are your brand colors? What is your logo? Uh, when we look at your company, what do we see? We say, ah, this is prayer cave because we can see the brand. Mm -hmm. That is what used to be brand management. Mm -hmm. But now this one is evolving as well to what we are calling uh, brand promise. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. If I mention Subaru, what comes to your mind? Speed. Uh -huh. we, we know, we associate Subaru with uh -huh. speed. The exhaust. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Immediately start thinking, uh -huh. uh, you need, you're looking for a car for speed. Mm -hmm. When I talk about BMW, mm -hmm. comfort and luxury. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the brand is associated with certain mm -hmm. promise. Mm -hmm. So now we want to look at your brand and immediately start thinking, what is the brand promise? The moment you mention your business to people, what comes to their mind immediately? Mm -hmm. That is the promise. So have you built your brand to that level that now to the ears of the consumer, they associate you with certain specific promise? So now when we are doing market management, this is the promise we want to deliver to the customer. We want to live up to our promise. Mm -hmm. Um, yesterday I was walking around the city mm -hmm. and then I came across uh, this new eatery, a very nice hotel. So to my surprise, the hotel was very full of people. It was a beehive of activity. Mm -hmm. It's a new hotel. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I asked my friend, what do you think is happening? He told me the consumer of today. <laughs> is very careful about the brand promise. Mm -hmm. They are coming to sample. <laughs> <laughs> and they, tomorrow they come again. Uh -huh. Next week they come again. If you keep the, they find the promises, the brand is good. Uh -huh. Then if you consistently provide the same quality, you might maintain the numbers. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've seen the market is very quick to realize when the brand promise changes mm -hmm. and they quickly move on to the next available provider of the quality they're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, we, the, uh, as businesses, we exist in uh, a sea of competition. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, all of us, we are fighting for that one consumer. Mm -hmm. So now when we are speaking about brand promise, mm -hmm. is our marketer fully uh, aware about uh, the promise we are promising the customer. Mm -hmm. So, so if 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 the, our marketers carry that with them, then this is what they will sell. So, um, brand communication. We communicate in different platforms. Of course, the our, our marketing people we will position us in different media. What are they telling the customer? Are they carrying this the, our story? What we promise the customer. That is what we call brand promise. Mm -hmm. So uh, the third one we talked about now, uh, creating value, mm -hmm. communicating value. Mm -hmm. Now we want to talk about mm -hmm. delivering value. Mm -hmm. Delivering value is what we call uh, customer management. Mm -hmm. We've done product management. Mm -hmm. We've done uh, brand management. Mm -hmm. Now we are looking at the customer. Mm -hmm. Customer management. Mm -hmm. So customer management um, is something we call customer journey. Mm -hmm. okay. In your product, mm -hmm. in your service, you really want the customer to be part of it mm -hmm. because he's the consumer. So the customer will give you feedback. 
and will tell you um, what you can improve. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you what you can do, slight changes, and uh, you, you, you realize big improvements on your product. Mm -hmm. So if you walk the journey with the customer as part of your business, then you realize that now you're solving their problem. Mm -hmm. You're not building just your product. Mm -hmm. You know, the conversation has changed a lot over time. Mm -hmm. Before, people used to just say, let us innovate a product and then we have to push it to mm -hmm. the market. Mm -hmm. so, uh, sort of, we have to force them accept. Mm -hmm. Right now, is we go to the market, we go to the customer, and then we listen. We put our ears on the ground. And then what is the customer asking for? Mm -hmm. Then I will come and design based on that. Yeah, yeah. And then on that journey of designing or developing a solution, mm -hmm. developing, um, I keep asking, I keep interacting with the customer. Mm -hmm. So the customer is part of the process. Mm -hmm. So wow. if you really want a successful business, mm -hmm. go out there and look for that target market. Mm -hmm. Identify. Now, the, the, the extent to which you understand the needs, the expectations, and the desires of the customer, mm -hmm. that is now the first level of winning. Mm -hmm. You can always tell success. Mm -hmm. Success starts by the knowledge you have about your customer. Mm -hmm. If you don't have uh, a lot of awareness about your consumer, mm -hmm. you don't understand their consumption patterns, mm -hmm. you don't understand their, what excites them, mm -hmm. uh, what is that spark they want to experience, mm -hmm. then you will not deliver that. Mm -hmm. You deliver what you feel is good for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get it. But it's not what is good for the, the customer. customer. This is the departure. Mm -hmm. So uh, what has been happening in our businesses, mm -hmm. we've created what we call silos. Mm -hmm. So you have a business team, mm -hmm. you have a research and development team. Mm -hmm. All of them are doing exemplary work. Mm -hmm. And then you have a marketing and sales team. Mm -hmm. Also, they're supposed to do a good job. So now, when these three exist in separation, uh, we call it silos. Mm -hmm. they ex you're, you're building walls. Mm -hmm. But now, they needed to tap from each other. Okay. So the, the, the product developer will sit with uh, the marketer and ask the marketer, what is the customer saying? So the more information we get from the marketer, on behalf of the customer, better still, if we get this information from the consumer, mm -hmm. what is the consumer saying? So we, we, we now put, em, embed this mm -hmm. into our design of solutions. Mm -hmm. So what are we saying? We are saying any business you're doing, don't do it for you. Okay. Do it to satisfy mm -hmm. the need of the customer. Mm -hmm. If the customer, if you're going to put a smile, mm -hmm. Onto the face of the customer, mm -hmm. they're going to go to their pocket and mm -hmm. release money. Mm -hmm. So we only realize profits mm -hmm. when the customer is happy. Mm -hmm. So the level to which you're going to make the customers happy, you're going to, re to realize mm -hmm. your profit. Mm -hmm. So now this is now what we are redefining as mm -hmm. market management. Wow. <laughs> you understand? You realize we are not talking about marketing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a change of conversation there. Yeah, yeah. We are moving now to marketing. Management. Management, uh -huh. which involves manag management of three mm -hmm. aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, product management, mm -hmm. uh, brand mm -hmm. management, mm -hmm. and customer mm -hmm. management. Wow. We collectively bring this together mm -hmm. and we form a collaboration mm -hmm. of experts. Now we are ready to, to go and deliver that product to the target market at a profit. Wow. Anytime you realize we are delivering, but not at a profit, at a loss, mm -hmm. now you want to question those three things. Mm -hmm. These are the fundamentals of business. Fundamentals of any resilient and sustainable business mm -hmm. will be on those three. Wow. Yes. Wow. What are the most critical aspects of market management? Um, now, look at these three aspects we have just touched mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. If you are to pick any of those, mm -hmm. 
Uh, which one would you go for? <laughs> <laughs> that one. That one. Uh-huh. You know, there's a saying that um, mm-hmm. the customer is king. Yeah. How true is that saying? That saying is perfect. Uh-huh. We, we ever developed <laughs> that that quote and statement. Uh-huh. He was spot on. Uh-huh. The customer is king. Uh-huh. So before anything, mm-hmm. think customer mm-hmm. first. Mm-hmm. Where is the place of the customer? Mm-hmm. So if now whatever we are doing, we are doing it for the king. Mm-hmm. So we want to please the king. Mm-hmm. We want to satisfy the king. Mm-hmm. We, we are not looking for profit. Mm-hmm. Profit is an outcome mm-hmm. of satisfying mm-hmm. the like king the customer yeah yes <laughs> profit is an outcome uh, of the king smiling <laughs> so focus on making the king happy mm-hmm. customer is the king mm-hmm. so whether it's a service whether it is a business you know uh there are business uh business businesses are all kinds mm-hmm. we have all manner and kinds of business yeah, yeah. the principles are, are the same if you want your business to be sustainable, if you want your business to be very efficient, if you, are, you want your business to be very profitable, mm-hmm. can you start measuring the satisfaction of yeah, the customer? Yes, um, so uh, there's uh, a, 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 a score which has been created. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a standard score. Mm-hmm. It's called a net promoter score. Mm-hmm. Net promoter score uh, means <clears throat> if if uh, you consume my services, mm-hmm. if you consume my products, then I will come back and, and uh, ask you, Eric, uh, what is the likelihood of you mentioning me to <laughs> someone? Um, and what will you tell them? Of course, there is likelihood of you mentioning, but is it on the negative? Is it on the positive? This is what we call net promoter. So how many people measure this? You know, we are talking about uh, SMEs. Of course, I know the big corporates, they have made this as the, part of their practice. They have made this as part of their culture. But now we are saying even at the basic level, at the SME level, is it possible to start looking for customer feedback? and asking what is the customer saying are you able to measure are you able to develop even the most basic nps score it's like uh, just picking your phone and um, asking how was the service uh, i've gone into a few hotels in town and uh, the moment they serve you uh, they, are, they, they, they start asking, um, how is everything? How is the ambience? You tell them, good. After, after you finish your food, then they ask, how, how was it? Now, that is uh, getting feedback. Now, th- what you're saying, f- this feedback should be documented, should be now collected in form of data, and should be analyzed. Out of 100 customers we served today, how many said they were comfortable, they were satisfied with our services? Then did we ask the next question that would you mention this to some of your friends? Um, so the likelihood of a customer mentioning you to some of their networks is what we call, pro, they are promoting you. It's what we call now the net promoter. We call it net because uh, net looks at the total number of promoters and the d- detractors. If there are people who are not happy, of course, they will tell others about yeah. that and they will be detracting, they'll be destroying your business. So that is the number of detractors. So when you take the total number of uh, promoters and detractors, then you get a net promoter score. Uh, <clears throat> between a scale of 1 to 10, you find people above uh, 7 to 10, that is where we have promoters. Between 5 to 7, those are neutral people. They are not no here nor there. They can do anything, depends on the day. People below 5, 
clearly they will damage your brand. They'll go out yes. there <laughs> and they will speak bad things about your brand. You, 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 need, to, you need to really manage them. Uh, you need to sit them down and say, <laughs> what did we do wrong? Can, we, can you get a chance to correct? Uh, <laughs> uh, can, can I serve you another meal if the first one you are not very happy? Uh, Really, you need to focus on the detractors because a lot of times they are more powerful. Especially in the new age of social media. Yeah, you know, in social media, uh-huh. you just need uh, one negative reputation. Just want some, uh, one person to say, I, I worked with this organization <laughs> and this is how they treat their workers. <clears throat> now, the damage this is able to cause, uh-huh. and you know you invested a lot of money to build your brand. It has taken years. And then one person gives a negative feedback. You know, uh, when you go to YouTube, they have what you call community rules. Why do they have community rules? To give a platform for someone to report you. So when you see people are very careful, to obey these rules because they know it will take only one day to bring all this work down. Yeah. yeah. So, so now you as a business, uh, you as an entrepreneur, you want to be sure uh, you are watching and monitoring feedback from your customers. And especially now if you can now uh, make it, uh, institutionalize it as a, as a culture, and start now having a net promoter score. And you, 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 you can say at any particular time, I think this is how we are doing. So let me ask, in a business, you have a, an entire team. You have team, you have the accounting team, you have the sales team, you have uh, the production team, you have everybody. Everyone should be knowing what is our score. Because in one way or another, they're going to contribute to that. So as a founder or as an entrepreneur, you need now to build this culture into their bloodline. They need to be aware that a small thing about our customer, this is how it's going to impact our businesses. So the impact and the consequences out of the negative score, we might close the shop, you might lose your job, so that it becomes again a collective effort everybody is focusing on the customer 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 is king i think i think uh, when i open a big office i will write at, 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 the, at a, with big letters somewhere <laughs> customer <laughs> is king all all, all uh, where, where, when um, in the morning I, i'm greeting my employees <laughs> i'll be asking what is the customer saying <laughs> is the customer happy or not are we satisfying the customer? So if we focus, if we keep our eyes on the customer, then we are likely to win their hearts. We are likely to win their emotions and we are likely to convert them from consumers to customers. So that is, uh, that is what I would consider the most critical aspect in market, in market management. So when you're sending your marketers out there, Give them the responsibility of collecting verifiable feedback. Any sale they're going to make, any marketing effort they're going to create, one of their responsibilities, also let them bring the voice of the customer back to the business so that we can now implement some of these aspects. So market knowledge, market intelligence uh, is extremely important to the success, to determine how far you're going to stretch as a business. Yes. It's not just selling, just send them out also to collect feedback. Yes, and bring data. <laughs> Elaborate more about purchasing a funnel or sales funnel. Ah, sales funnel, purchasing funnel, marketing funnel. It's a funnel. Yeah, <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah whatever name we call it. Uh, we are just saying, are we cautious of the numbers? So, uh, if I ask how healthy is your business, you will say, it, are we doing good? No, that is not good enough. <laughs> that is not good enough. Yeah. Y- you should be telling me, um, we, 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 we aspired to sell to 10 customers. Uh, we got nine customers and I think that is beyond our expectations. We have met our expectations. Numbers speak. 
So now introducing the concept of sales funnel, the concept of marketing funnel is, is simply asking, are we measuring our conversion efforts? So because we have a market here, we call it market potential. These are consumers. Consumers are not customers. Everyone is a consumer. So the market is available for us to go and fish. So now the person who will buy the product becomes the, the customer, becomes the client. So we start with the consumer and we want to convert them to a client. So um, chances are, if you talk to 100 people, I think, do you, are you going to get 100 clients buying your product? No. <laughs> no, 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 today. <laughs> so now we begin looking uh, at a uh, funnel. So we want to introduce <clears throat> the, this, this concept of uh, marketing funnel or sales funnel to understand how conversion takes place, how these numbers narrow down and what efforts we need to put at every level so that now the number of conversion at the bottom is slightly bigger. So you don't look at the bottom without looking at the top. So now, uh, as, as the name suggests, it is a funnel. It means uh, it takes as this shape of a funnel. On top, it's very wide. A hundred, you talk to a hundred people. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let me use which number. A hundred is a good number. A hundred is a good number. Okay. So <clears throat> when, when, when you create awareness, mm -hmm. the sales funnel starts with awareness. Big one. The first stage is, the first stage of marketing is awareness. So go out there and create awareness and be able to measure how many people now have heard about your brand. How many people are aware that you exist? How many people can tell, ah, Eric is, um, is selling this and this? So that is called awareness. Can we measure that number? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, they will talk about reach. How many people are we reaching? We are creating awareness. So now if you're looking at creating awareness to, let's say, 10 million people, then you ask yourself, how can I, how can I reach that kind of a population? Uh, today we are <clears throat> at the digital age where we can use digital marketing. So when we go to the website, when we go to social media, uh, whether it is TikTok, whether it is Facebook, whether it is um, the YouTube, they are asking you, do you want to boost? <laughs> Do you want to boost your information? So they're asking you, what reach do you want us to help you uh, reach? Okay, how many people do you want to create awareness? At least they hear about you, not buy. Yeah. At least yeah. they know that you exist. So that is called awareness. So we want to, ma to target such a big population at the awareness stage so that now when the numbers come down, we increase our chances of conversion. So what happens after you create awareness to a population? A good number of that, they, will, they want to engage. They, they are genuinely interested. They will realize this is the, this is the uh, problem I've been wanting to solve. This person is talking about something which has been disturbing me. They, they create genuine interest because you, you're speaking their language, you're speaking to their problem. So that number, it, not everybody who has heard about you, of course, they, they have this need. No. So those who have this need create genuine interest. So now they can engage you. They will write to you and ask, uh, can you tell me more about this? Um, where, where, where can I find this? They start asking such questions. Uh, how do you sell this? So that is called engagement. So now we are looking at um, if you created awareness to 1 million people, how many are engaging? So for us, for us to answer that question, we go back. What was the quality of your awareness? 
you know you can uh, create awareness when you put a billboard there everyone is going to see but is it attractive enough to provoke engagement so what is the quality so you begin now to analyze that in terms of quality such, such that now you want to convert as many to engage as many at least to ask you know when you go out there and you're selling your merchandise and someone is asking you what is the price it's very encouraging to the seller at, some people just want to be asked <laughs> what are you selling they feel good enough even if you don't buy they say just ask so that is engagement extremely extremely important so now after now they are engaging uh what is the next level you want them to go to the next level of considering we call it consideration so now that is now the language of the market the salesperson they need to convert these people at least to consider so they will ask uh, they will go deeper and uh, because they are interested they will ask specific questions can i see the data sheet can i see the specification they go can i do test drive if it is a car now someone who is going to that level they have come to you they, they they saw the car in the advert they they have come to your showroom and now they want to test drive that person is at the, that level now, this is a customer journey so we are not quick to go to the cell it's a journey we are taking the journey so make sure you don't miss you don't lose them on the way a lot of time um our sales people will make assumptions and then they will offend the customer and lose them on the journey so we want to be very careful to win them from level number 1 and they go to level number 2 and then from level number 2 we go and fish them using defined tactics that's why we train our sales people so then now we fish them from level number two where they were engaging and bring them down to consideration that you feel you cannot go back i have to buy this i have to commit my money to this now that is uh, at the level of consideration so if they buy they have made uh, they made a decision it's called action they have gone to level number five they have taken a decision they have purchased you've converted them so have we finished no <laughs> there's one more mm -hmm. at the last level it's called advocacy advocacy is um are you going to retain them they have bought your product but are they likely to come back so the likelihood of them coming back also depends on how you're going to manage them so don't don't sell and then uh, you don't you 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 forget that you need them to come back so you need them to at the selling point you need to give them the best experience so that they feel um they feel valued as a customer and then they are likely to come back for more they are likely to bring a friend they are likely to refer someone now that is called advocacy so now uh, that is this customer journey five levels does our marketers does our sales people understand that it it, it takes a funnel to deliver these numbers we are asking for so when i give um, if i give you targets I say we need to sell 10 units. What will go into your mind? What number goes into your mind? You need to calculate immediately backwards up the funnel. I'll give you a number. Statistically, the conversion rate when we are doing sales and marketing is around 6%. And again, it varies from industry to industry. So, <laughs> if I need you to sell uh, six glasses, how many people should be aware that we sell quality glasses? 100. 
100 people must have must get this message that our glasses are the best in the market they have the best value 100 people and that is targeting to sell six if you do less than 100 chances are i statistically i will tell you chances of you selling six maybe five so so <laughs> you see how the numbers are reducing yeah. we it's got the conversion rate so now uh, if you're marketing if you're selling the number which go, needs to go into your mind is the awareness if your target is uh, to deliver to sell uh, a thousand units you need to know that a thousand units is seven percent of a bigger number then you need to look for that number what number if i take seven percent or six percent is going to bring me the thousand then the effort the marketing effort the marketing resources the marketing teams the marketing budget the marketing language will depend on that bigger number than awareness so when we are sending our people to facebook to instagram to youtube to tiktok the reach they are looking for is not the numbers we gave them in the business's targets if they go with that number they will give us six percent of that number <laughs> So if, if, if you tell your people, go and bring me 100 customers, they should not think about that number. They should think about 600. Whatever the percentage will be, 6% of them. If, if, you, if, you, if they target 1,000 people, now 6% will be 60 people. So they need to target 1,000 to deliver 60. If we, if we need more people, then we need more awareness. So, so uh, we normally say, throw your bread in many waters <laughs> and it will come back to you. But now, how big is the pool where we are fishing? If you need f to get one fish, go to a place where they are highly concentrated <laughs> and uh, if they are around 50 fish there, chances are when you throw, you're going to likely, you're likely to get a few. So now the concept of uh, funnel, marketing, marketing funnel or sales funnel is to bring the idea that not everyone you talk to will convert to a customer. Yeah. So we call them consumers. You will hear about uh, leads, prospects. Now those are conversions. From lead, you convert them into we, this one. We use their suspects. <laughs> suspect is someone interested. <laughs> then you convert a suspect to a prospect. Prospect is someone considering. Then you convert a prospect to a customer. Customer is a buyer. So whereas uh, the business is interested uh, on the buyer, they need to keep an eye on the leads, on the suspects on the prospects yeah. <laughs> before we get the buyer so this applies to whether it is an sme uh -huh. whether it is a startup uh -huh. whether it is a service whether um, it's an event mm -hmm. whether it's an idea wow. whether it is a non-government organization whether it is a government organization they, they, we are their consumers. The citizen is the consumer. They need to apply the same philosophy because we consume based on our emotions and uh, they need to appeal to us. So the, everybody. So we are not talking to marketers. We are talking actually to leaders. If you need to influence these masses of people, then the strategy is get your word to uh, a group of people, create awareness to a bigger group, and then start developing them from one level to another using certain tactics, using certain efforts, uh, being very sure about the numbers. So uh, we really want to encourage our entrepreneurs that we start the practice of uh, collecting data. Wow. Collecting data. Because if I can collect data on the level of awareness, then I, I know when if I need to put more effort to convert them to engagement. And if I can collect data there, I need to know what effort I need to put in place. I need to know, I will be able to tell where I lost the customer on the customer journey. 
So it is not hit and run. You don't go out there and sell. You develop a journey. Create a conversation, awareness, engagement, interest, consideration, then win them. So this is uh, how we need to look at marketing management. It's a complete journey. So uh, we started with the, the collaboration, how internally we need to collaborate between uh, uh, product management, uh, we came to brand management, and we finished with customer management. And then we introduced a concept called the funnel. This is about numbers, tracking numbers. And also we've touched about uh, NPS. Are we listening to the ground? We don't want to sit, uh, sit, sit comfortable and then someone will tell us square ground. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are waiting for the results. <laughs> you get it? We need to connect with the ground. That's now the concept of marketing management. It's bigger than, it's bigger than, sometimes we are shallow in marketing. <laughs> We're just touching parts of it. We need to look at it wholesomely, collectively. There's a lot of collaboration. It's an art. It's a journey. It's a process. And then we are going to say, we are going to have successful enterprises. We are going to have efficient enterprises. We are going to create happy economies because of these uh, fundamental principles. Wow. Yes. If you're an entrepreneur right there, I need to go back to the footage of this episode. There's a totally different kind of marketing <laughs> management style that has been introduced here by Mr. Felix. That is so profound. Thank you so much. My Talk pleasure. Tell us about uh, how to grow limited and what you do, and also give us your phone number. Thank you very much. Uh, in OptiPro, uh, we exist to create efficiencies and uh, sustainability to organizations. Our our, um, our mission is geared towards seeing the su your success. Your success is our joy. If you are an entrepreneur, are you running your business efficiently? Are there segments and sections of your business which we can come and accelerate, whether it is your people? We train and convert them to be entrepreneurs. <laughs> you know, that's a new developing subject. Yeah. If you are an entrepreneur, you need entrepreneurs. Yeah. Employees will miss you. <laughs> entrepreneurs, people who are thinking business. Wow. Entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah. Now, that is, that is what we do. <laughs> We come and transform and convert them to entrepreneurs uh, to make sure the entrepreneur is happy. We don't need employees now. We need entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, if you want to reach me, uh, you can reach me through WhatsApp. You can reach me through... Uh, my WhatsApp number will be 0720-327978. Uh, you'll find me in 0720 Seven nine seven eight. When you go on social media, you'll find us uh, uh, as uh, at OptiPro KE. Uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. You'll get us there, and let's let's con have this conversation moving. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Also provide online training just in case you're very far from. Uh, even outside of our country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> wow, that brings us to the end of the episode today on marketing management. It's a totally different concept. We've learned about customer journeys and we thank God for everything.